Good afternoon, Cedarfield family. This is Michael Shaw. Thank you for tuning into our live streaming here daily at 3 o'clock. Hopefully, those of you that uh, listened to the uh, governor here in the past hour uh, were able to get up, stretch your legs, um, and uh, get a little sip of tea or snack on some fruits or vegetables. We have about a 40-minute presentation tops today. I've learned lessons over the last couple of days to keep these uh, live chats as informative as we can and as precise as we can, uh, but not let them go over at least 45 minutes. So that's our goal today. First, I just wanted to kick off uh, this particular live chat with something that we had said yesterday so those that are listening and understand the similar the similarities between these two phrases that's great if those of you that um, still have a um, a confused definition then I'm just going to take the next couple of minutes to explain the difference between social distancing and physical distancing because you're going to hear this, these two terms used interchangeably throughout the weekend across all media outlets. So both of these terms mean the same thing. It's a little play on the word versus social versus uh, physical. Because what we have been learning from other countries, particularly Italy um, and South Korea, uh, Vietnam and our own states, Washington, New York, and California, who have all been practicing social distancing. What these uh, countries and or states have learned that we are trying to adopt here, uh, here on the East Coast, is physical distancing, be differentiating that with social distancing. And the reason for it is because a lot of people are taking social distancing to a different level, and we're already noticing the uh, psychological price tag that goes along with just stop communicating with anybody and everybody. And that's not what social distancing is about. This is particularly true for people who live alone. We have many residents who live alone, but struggle potentially with the emotional um, issues that come along with isolation and isolation's first cousin, loneliness. So social distancing does not mean not connecting with people. In fact, it's the complete opposite. More so ever today than probably in your entire lifetime, we want people to connect we just want people to connect in a different way. We want people to connect as long as you're six feet apart from somebody. We want people to utilize the phone and email as much as possible and video conferencing to stay connected to your loved ones, um, your neighbors here, or people that you may have friends. Those of you that have friends or loved ones around the country, staying connected through those social media outlets. So the term social distancing certainly means a reduction in social contact, and we're just trying to rebrand the term, though. That's all we're trying to do, is rebrand it. We want to protect ourselves psychologically, which we're going to get into here in the next 20 minutes with with Matt, Karen, and Elizabeth of how to utilize our nine domains of wellness to stay connected so that we don't fall into this psychological trap of isolation. So with that, I'm going to turn the microphone over to Matt Dameron. Matt and the wellness and leisure team have been working very diligently over the last few days to publish a new informer and uh, content for uh, the Touchtown app. 
So you can see, first up, we're going to have Matt and Karen here. If you have any questions for Matt uh, and Karen, please text this number. And then after they're finished, Matt will be speaking with Elizabeth in just a couple of minutes. So Matt, Karen. Incredible amount of content on 
on the app right now. I'm kind of scrolling through it as we speak. And uh, I really suggest you go on there and play around with it. Um, we've got quite a few positive comments about uh, the content. And again, like Karen said, if you want something on there or have an interest in something that goes along with our nine domains of wellness, please let us know and, um, and we can add some more of that content on there. It's a great, great resource.
your first initial and last name are your username, and then your uh, resident, number. resident number is your password. I've learned something new today, too. <laughs> Eric, any questions for Alyssa or coming in? So again, if you have, this is kind of an ever-evolving thing. This is new to us as well. So if you, again, if you have things that you want to see um, or areas that you want us to focus on, we're all ears, and we'll, we'll start getting stuff out to you. So let us know. Thank you all. Okay, just a couple other announcements. And again, just want to emphasize uh, what Karen had said, that the informer is outside of your apartment, whether you're living in assisted living health center, um, or those of you living in your independent living apartment, your informer is outside your door as we speak. Those of you that live in the cottages, your informer is coming down to you very, very shortly. Couple of administrative things new uh, as of yesterday. Hopefully, everyone has had a chance to read the new memo posted um, on our website uh, from our chief executive officer, Chris Henderson. Many of you had that a print copy of that uh, in your mailbox and were delivered to your front door as well. Whether you're in assisted living independent living apartments or cottages. So hopefully you've had a chance uh, to read that content. Um, two big differences in that memo. One has to do with team members. We are really ramping up our efforts to help team members with education about what they can do with social distancing and or physical distancing uh, with self-quarantining while they're not here at Cedarfield so that we can have a higher percentage of assurance that given their lifestyle um, at their home and while they're away from Cedarfield, they're protecting themselves as best they can. So while they come here to this community, we're protecting the residents and their fellow team members as well, their colleagues. That's probably the biggest difference uh, in that memo. The second thing has to do with the term physical distancing uh, versus social distancing. Secondly, I just want to remind everybody that those of you, thank you to those of you that have called down to the administration office and have advised us of whether you have been traveling in the last 14 days um, internationally or to one of the hot spots here in the United States. We appreciate that. Just again, uh, I keep emphasizing this because the Department of Health keeps calling me every day do I have any updates to my list. So those of you that have, um, if, you, if you've been traveling to California, Washington State, New York, Florida, um, Tennessee, Knoxville areas are the hot spot right now uh, emerging. If you've been to any one of those locations, I need to know um, so that we can help you quarantine uh, a little bit more effectively in your area uh, to protect everybody else. So please uh, do the right thing, contact the administration suite. Thirdly, just want to clarify something about mail delivery. Last, yesterday, we provided, and this, this message is only going to those of you that live in the main building, that live in a independent living uh, apartment. So we provided everyone a flyer yesterday about how we are approaching retrieving your mail. Many of you receive a flyer with your apartment number on it and a very specific time to come down and retrieve your mail. I want to emphasize one thing. We are not we are not expecting you 
to leave your apartment and come down here in five minutes. That's that time slot that's on your memo has to do with your time to come and actually take your key, put your key in the box, retrieve your mail, and then lock it back up. If it's a oh, any touch. Did you see that? Okay, okay. If you if you need 10 or 15 minutes to get down here, then please come down and stretch your legs. Walk as slow as you need to come to come down here. And if you need 10 or 15 minutes to walk back, please take the time. That time slot on there is just the time that we're trying to concentrate on the number of people that are in and around the boxes. So I wanted to clarify that for everyone. The second point of clarity I would like to make, especially since we're going into a weekend here, and I'm, I'm not gonna have the availability to do a live chat tomorrow, we are not under lockdown right now. We're not under mandatory quarantine, meaning you have to stay in your apartment for a very isolated situation. We, we are not at that point right now. We're under a physical distancing and self-quarantining mode right now, which means you can go outside and walk around. If you want to walk around at 7 o'clock in the morning, please do so. If you want to walk around at midnight, please be safe. Bring a flashlight with you, maybe a protect, uh, a reflective vest. You can walk around outside whenever you want. And we encourage it. It's beautiful. It's going to be a beautiful weekend. If you want to walk and enjoy the hallways and walk inside since it's a flatter surface, for those of you that have uh, mobility devices, please walk around inside. Just keep in mind social distancing, physical distancing, and keep six feet apart from one another. So just want to emphasize how important it is for your emotional well-being to breathe some fresh air, to get outside, stretch out, enjoy this beautiful weekend that God, God is bestowing us. Um, so we're going we're gonna to pick, pick back up with mail um, retrieval on Monday. I really appreciate your cooperation with, uh, with this program so that I can, when the Department of Health calls me later today and Monday again, I can emphasize to them that we have the program in place. We are disinfecting packages that come into the main building uh, from FedEx or UPS or the U.S. Postal Service with some disinfectant. Uh, one of the questions that came in is, can we do that for the cottages? And that would be an impossibility for the team right now to track every delivery person that may come into the property and come to specific cottages and wipe down some things. If you in the cottages can do me a favor and take personal responsibility and disinfect um, your packages, what I do at home is when that package comes to my front door, I disinfect, I just do like three little squirts to the top of the package and then I open it and then retrieve the stuff that's inside. That's all I really do. And then I keep the box outside, and then later on I put on gloves and put it in the recyclable bin. So if you want to go to that effort, um, I would implore you, implore you to do that. Those of you that are living in the cottages, do a little couple squirts on the top, let it sit there for a few minutes, open it up, retrieve your product, and um, housekeeping will come and pick up the cardboard. Um, the Cedarfield store will be open for business. We retrieved a lot of inventory here in the last couple of days. So on Monday, the store, Monday through Friday, will be open from 10 to 3. So please come on down to uh, view what we have in there. Many of the items are essential items that residents have been asking for. Speaking of supplies, 
Amanda and the transportation team are expanding one of our amenities. So for the last couple of weeks, we have had a uh, Tuesday and shop Tuesday and Thursday shopping day with Ann Reed. And on those particular days, the team has probably helped out on average about 45, 45 people on Tuesday and Thursday of this week. So they're going to expand that service. So starting next week, shopping service will be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So Amanda has a slide about this program on 970. So if you have any interest in taking advantage of that program, then I would uh, tune in to 970 and get more information. So we're expanding that program. Today, we had our drop-off shuttle supplies program um, for the folks that live in assisted living, the health center, and uh, memory support. And I believe we had over 60 different deliveries today on almost four different ballet parts uh, with stuff that uh, loved ones from uh, the local area dropped off their supplies and we shuttled those supplies to residents living in the health center and assisted living and memory support. So, great news on that front. And then on Monday, that program will kick back up for the independent living apartments. So those of you that live here in the main building, uh, in independent living, if you have a need and you're communicating with your uh, loved one, a friend in the local market, and they want to drop something off for you, they can drop um, that bag off to the park and ride area over on Gaskins and Mayland on Monday at 1 o'clock between 1 and 3. Okay, that's all of my updates. What time do we have? 27, 30 minutes. So uh, we have um, two questions. How do we locate our resident number? Great question. So this, how, I'm gonna repeat the question. How do we locate our resident number? So just a little while ago, Matt described how to access Touchdown. So when you go into, www.mycedarfield.org and you log in with your username, which is your first initial and your last name. Your password is your resident number and you can find your resident number on your monthly statements. So if you, those of you that uh, collect your monthly, prior monthly statement, um, you can look on your on your statement and your resident number is there. Or if you just don't feel like even looking for that monthly statement, please call the business office and they will retrieve that number for you. Or you can certainly call the concierge desk for help. Perfect. Thank you, Karen. What's up? Okay, so that's um, all of the information I have. Any other questions? No? Good, good. Just want to repeat that we have no known COVID-19 cases at Cedarfield at this time. This is a community-wide uh, situation, so please pray for the people, the individual people in the Richmond area, the organizations that have known uh, cases, please pray for them. Please be super vigilant this weekend with self-quarantining and physical distancing. And I just want you to know that while physical uh, health is our paramount concern, please know that we are so incredibly committed to your emotional well-being 
please reach out to our team members in the wellness and leisure team, those of you that live in assisted living or the health center, please reach out to your neighborhood leaders or your clinical leaders if you need any support. We never want you to feel alone. Even as we adhere to these important practices of social distancing and physical distancing, we don't want you to be alone. These are difficult times that demand a lot from all of us. But as I said all week long, we are a very strong community and we will get through this crisis together. One moment at a time, one second at a time, one socially distant interaction at a time, we will get through this situation together. So with that, I'm gonna turn the microphone over to Trish Carter that has some spiritual words of help for us. Good afternoon. And as sort of a public service announcement, while I was backstage, so to speak, I did hear some rumblings that perhaps that username and password information was not quite accurate. So stay tuned for an update on how to log in. But for now, I would like to share with you Psalm 4610. This is a meditation that is meant for you to say over and over until you Each line just removes one word at a time. I will read it through twice. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know. Be still. Be. Won't you say it with me if you can see the screen? Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am 